Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, thank you so much for joining us. It's a great pleasure to having you here. Thank you. Good morning to everybody. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, let me begin with something personal, if I may. How are you individually going through the current lockdown and, and social distancing? Uh, I suppose this must be a difficult thing, isn't it? Well, it's a difficult thing for, for everybody. I mean, for every Slovenian, every European. Uh, for, uh, for those who are part of the government, uh, it's especially challenging. Uh, I don't know which, which day is today, which hour is today. So it's, uh, I know that it's, it's exactly uh, four weeks we, we take over as a new government until then days are, uh, well, uh, without names. Mr. Prime Minister, may I ask you, how is your government responding to the corona epidemic? And, and in that respect, could you share with us some of the key challenges you are facing in Slovenia? I got my government approved uh, Friday, 13th of uh, March, I think 8 o'clock in the evening. And after one hour, we had first session, first meeting of the new government dealing with all kinds of problems. We were not prepared as a country uh, institutionally. The plans we had were for, for uh, flu, not for COVID-19. Our stocks were empty. There were no, no significant amount of uh, personal protective, protective equipment. So we, we, we jumped in the water starting to swim. And uh, after four weeks, I can say, so far, so good. So we, we with, with all measures, we introduced social distancing, uh, stopping everything which was not vital for everyday life. We succeeded to uh, slow down the uh, spread of virus and uh, the tempo of the epidemic. We still have uh, over 50, deaths uh, from coronavirus, but uh, the epidemic is uh, slowing down and uh, today we will start to think uh, what, to, what to make more liberal uh, during this, uh, well, still, still keeping the social distancing, but now uh, when we, ha we have more uh, not enough, but but much more than at the beginning. Our stocks are. Uh, I'm speaking about the personal protective equipment. Uh, now we can uh, we can uh, make some measures uh, more uh, liberal, and uh, this next week will be the week when we will start to uh, well. Uh, uh, look more optimistic into the future. I hope so. But we, we, we are aware that this is not the end. Virus is still here. We don't have uh, any guarantee that, that uh, a new break can start anywhere. So everything uh, we are doing, we are doing after very careful studying of all circumstances and uh, on the basis of the uh, advices from our uh, healthcare team. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, referring to all these uh, measures you've taken for the people, may I ask you how the corona crisis is affecting the domestic politics in Slovenia and, and uh, more interestingly, how does it affect the perception of people uh, regarding uh, your government? Uh, well, Slovenia was in a specific position. We were actually without government when, when, uh, we, when the epidemic was declared in Slovenia. This happened uh, 16 days later than the epidemic was uh, pronounced in Lithuania, for instance. And we are neighbor of Italy. Lithuania is not, uh, so we can imagine our, our start. Uh, so, we started with, uh, with everything what we think that uh, will be effective, what will work. 
we studied carefully uh, what's going on in Italy, especially in the uh, province of Lombardy. Uh, people in Slovenia has uh, also personal connections, uh, doctors from our hospitals, they, they, they know uh, doctors in Italy, uh, also in other countries, so we established quick, quick exchange of the, uh, of the information. And this uh, helped us a lot, you know, to to uh, well to buy some time for, for for from the past and to to be uh, realistic with our uh, responses. So far, uh, our figures are quite good. We uh, reformed, we reorganized our healthcare system. Uh, well, in the middle of the battle, and. Uh, Today we are we are seriously prepared if there is second phase of, of <laughs> epidemic. Uh, and thanks God, also the neighboring countries are are coping much better now after after four weeks or five weeks of, of the epidemic. And uh, this is also reason for more optimistic view into the future today. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, referring to the fact that uh, Slovenia is neighboring with uh, a number of European countries, may I ask you, how do you personally see so far uh, the EU's uh, response, or, or if I may say so, lack of it against the multiple threats posed by coronavirus? Do you think in that respect that uh, EU has been doing good enough uh, in terms of collective uh, solidarity uh, in fighting the ongoing epidemic? Well, from the from the first day uh, when we started four weeks ago, uh, we established immediately close contacts with, with our neighboring countries. Uh, I called personally prime ministers and my ministers called their counterparts in neighboring countries. At that time, we had uh, huge lines on the border, especially uh, there were. Mm, tens of kilometers of, of trucks and other vehicles waiting for, for entering the country, for exiting the country. Uh, and within a few days, we uh, established so-called uh, convoy passing of the border and uh, cleared the mess. Uh, this was only possible because of very effective cooperation with neighboring countries. Unfortunately, it uh, took much more time for the whole European Union to reorganize, to establish these green lines for the trucks. But uh, now it's more or less the, the, uh, well, the traffic of goods is going uh, on uh, relatively smoothly. Uh, so these uh, green lines uh, are working, are workable. Um, there are still problems with with uh, you know importing or passing with the with the transits uh, with the personal protective equipment. Some European countries are still blocking uh, such passing, but things are getting better. Things are getting better, and uh, every day we have more more. Uh, our stocks are uh, a little bit more more full and uh, it's the same as far as I'm following the situation inside of the European Union and also in uh, the region. The situation is, is, is getting better every day also in the neighborhood, in the region and uh, in whole European Union. There are still some countries which are much more affected by this epidemic. Uh, Slovenia is uh, starting now also to send some small amount of, of uh, help for some Balkan countries. Uh, we also helped two days ago to our neighbors in, uh, in uh, Venezia, Giulia, in neighboring regions in Italy. And uh, we are establishing close contacts, exchanging information, uh, experiences. Our civil protection forces are cooperating with, with counterparts in neighboring countries. So situation is improving, but uh, still uh, there is no, uh, after well, five or six weeks, we still don't have, for instance, uh, 
uh, large enough efficient stock of personal protective equipment uh, on the European level. We don't have uh, such a stock for critical uh, medical equipment uh, and uh, many other things. So there is still uh, a lot of work to do. Uh, and Mr. Prime Minister, in responding to the outbreak of coronavirus, uh, the European Union decided to close its external borders uh, for 30 days starting from uh, 17 March 2020. And similarly, uh, many EU member states, uh, including Slovenia, have uh, reintroduced border closures, border controls, and so on and so forth. Uh, do you think that how this crisis will impact the future of Schengen zone, which is uh, one of the, I would say, tangible achievements of the European project? Well, when Slovenia entered the Schengen zone, Schengen area, uh, more than 10, 10 years ago, this was a day of joy for us. Uh, we, we, we felt united again with uh, our uh, compatriots living in neighboring countries. We, we, uh, we felt free again, you know, uh, you're part of former Yugoslavia where uh, people uh, had been uh, sh shot on the borders. It was like Berlin Wall. And Schengen area was uh, equivalent uh, for real freedom, you know, one of the reasons we entered the European Union. Current situation is, uh, is different. And uh, we, are both, we are facing problems on both sides, you know, with the external border, which is on one side, uh, that there is, uh, it's, it, it is not protected enough against uh, uh, illegal passing on the other side is still too complicated for for uh, for legal passing uh, so we have to we have to improve the system doesn't matter the the epidemic and so on uh, internal borders we all hope that this is uh, just temporary situation if if it stays for years uh, then uh, uh, this is this is a real different Europe. So it's it's more like uh, Europe in the Middle Ages. You know, uh, I, I, I'm I'm still optimist. I think that uh, we will uh, well uh, prevail. So everything what was the uh, value base uh, uh, for the foundation for the founding of the European Union is still something we, we should protect, we should, we, should, we should upgrade. But at the same time, uh, we, should, we should be also aware that uh, there is no strong European Union if the uh, member countries are weak. So we, we need uh, strong, stable, uh, prosperous uh, member countries, sovereign, member countries and only such countries can make uh, European Union strong and uh, well uh, also noticeable in the on the world stage uh, possible to protect the interests of its people. Uh, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, last but not least, uh, an article published by Politico on March 12th, uh, which is one of the most uh, circulated weekly in, in Brussels, wrote the following, and I will quote now. Uh, the key question for Slovenia and for the EU is how much Mr. Janez Jansa will follow the playbook of his closest ally, namely Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, who undermines the rule of law, media freedom, and other basic European values. Mr. Prime Minister, in this regard, my first question is, what would be your response to such critics coming particularly from Brussels? And secondly, if I may ask, uh, in case your government is going to prepare for Slovenia's presidency of the EU Council for next year, what would be your priorities uh, during the Council presidency? Uh, well, uh, speaking about Hungary, I think that uh, we, we have much better uh, understanding what's happening there because we are the neighbors and uh, I think it's uh, quite inappropriate to, to, deal, to, to repeat uh, such accusations 
also during the time of the epidemic, where this is over or when uh, the majority of the consequences of this epidemic are, are solved, we will count uh, well the consequences, we will see who reacted better. And uh, at that moment, uh, as far as we can predict now, I think that uh, Hungary will fare much better than, than Brussels, for instance, or Belgium or, or some other countries. Speaking about the, the powers, every government uh, needs, you know, to, to deal with, with uh, the epidemic and all uh, grave consequences of, of it. Uh, we all faced during last, last uh, weeks. Uh, we can compare the measures taken by Italian Prime Minister alone, or measures taken by French President alone, and measures taken by, uh, by Hungarian Prime Minister alone, and also measures uh, taken by uh, Slovenian Parliament. So for everything which is possible to be decided by Prime Ministers or governments in neighboring countries, uh, Slovenian government uh, has to go to parliament. So any, me any significant uh, measure we, we introduced, uh, especially all measures uh, with uh, financial consequences uh, were approved uh, in Slovenian government. So Slovenia uh, did not declare state of emergency. Uh, we are acting on the basis of the of the special law, which which has been introduced years ago, years ago or decades ago, uh, with the regulations how to fight uh, epidemic or pandemic. And th th this law is not adequate, so uh, we are changing it, but not the government uh, itself, but uh, through the parliament parliamentary procedure and all uh, we, we already passed uh, with one so-called mega law with uh, uh, many uh, well, uh, especially economic and uh, financial regulations how to help uh, companies how to help unemployed uh, how to organize better in this situation this law passed the Slovenian parliament with only one vote against. So, uh, nothing what you quoted, I didn't see this, I didn't uh, read it, is true for Slovenia. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, thank you so much for this insightful exchange and thank you so much for your contribution.